down. So today we're looking at a pair of parables, two stories uh, from Jesus with a spiritual meaning. So if you'd like to grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. Just a couple of verses today, blink and you'll miss them. You don't want to do that. So turn to Matthew chapter 13, (coughs) excuse me, verses 44 to 46. The parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. So Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. So there we go. They're quick, aren't they? Quick, but very profound. Jesus is making a really important point for us to learn. Now, hands up, have you ever done digging in the garden? Yes! Got to do digging in the garden. My brother used to have Star Wars characters. He would uh, do various things with his Star Wars characters, and then he would bury them in the garden, and you'd be digging away, and there you, you know, trying to put a plant in or something, and out would pop a Star Wars character. Anyway, I digress. Now, a few boys were out digging in, the back, in their back garden, okay? They were digging in the mud. They were digging and digging and digging. When all of a sudden, one of them hit something hard. What was it? What was it? So they started digging. They dug and they dug and they dug. Do you know what it was? It was this. It was a Ferrari. It was a Ferrari. A Ferrari was buried in their back garden. Talk about buried treasure. Apparently, years earlier, thieves had stolen this car, and they buried it, but they'd been unable to recover it, so there it stayed until these boys were digging in their garden and unearthed a Ferrari Dino. So, kids, when you get home, (laughs) dig up all your garden and see if there's a Ferrari in the backyard. No, don't do that. Don't (laughs) do that. Okay. But that is a bit, (laughs) that is a bit like our first parable when the man finds buried treasure. Now, both these parables are about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is describing his kingdom, and he wants us to know how great it is. The kingdom of heaven means God's rule in our lives through King Jesus. In other words, we are part of God's kingdom when we trust Jesus and so become part of God's family. We become part of God's kingdom through trusting Jesus. And what Jesus is saying here with these two parables is that trusting him and being part of his kingdom, being part of God's forever family, is worth more than anything. And so we want to make King Jesus number one in our lives. To start with, Jesus says the kingdom is like buried treasure. Now in the story... Uh, It seems like the man found the buried treasure almost by accident. He wasn't looking for it, just like those boys weren't looking for a Ferrari in their back garden. Maybe he was out walking, he's walking along, he bangs his toe on something hard, and he came across the treasure. He couldn't believe his eyes, and he's so happy. But there is a problem. He didn't own the field, so the treasure didn't belong to him. It belonged to whoever owned the field. But this treasure was so precious and so valuable that he had to have it. And so he hid the treasure again and he went off to buy the field. Now to buy the field 
was expensive. It cost a lot. So you can imagine, maybe he had a nice car, but well, that had to go to raise the money. He, he had a nice house, but that would need to go as well. He took out all the savings he had in the bank. He even sold his priceless collection of Super Mario figures. It was costly. It was hard saying goodbye to those things. But the wonderful treasure in the field was worth so much more than all those other things. And Jesus says, that's what his kingdom is like. It is worth more than all those things things. You don't want to miss out. You've got to have it. Well, after the man in the field, Jesus says that the kingdom is like a pearl of great value. So we hear about a merchant who's looking for fine pearls. He spends his days buying and selling pearls. He's always dreaming of the big one, finding that perfect, beautiful pearl. And then one day he does. <gasps> it's just stunning. Stunning. There is nothing like it. He has to have it. And so like the man in the field, he sells everything that he can to buy that pearl. Jesus is making the same point again. The kingdom of heaven, being friends with Jesus, being part of God's forever family is worth more than anything. You can't go without it. But why? Well, we'll think about that in just a moment. But first, we're going to watch a song by Colin Buchanan. It's all about the greatest treasure of all. Thank you, Matt. Of good things to enjoy, doesn't he? Friends and family and Nintendo Switch and phones and computers and sport and food and all sorts of things, which is so kind of him. Things we treasure. But we don't want to make good things God things and turn them into idols because the greatest treasure in the whole wide world is peace with God through the Lord Jesus. And we don't want to miss that. But sadly, many do. Let me ask you a question. How many Harry Potter books have been sold? What do you think? How many Harry Potter books have been sold? 100 million, 300 million 500 million. Hands up if you think it's 100. Hands up if you think it's 300. Hands up if you think it's 500. If you said 500 million copies, you are correct. Yes, over 500 million copies have been sold. That is a lot of books. That is a lot of books. Next question. How many publishers rejected the book, rejected Harry Potter? 10? 12 or 15. How many publishing houses rejected Harry Potter when it turned up on their slush pile? Okay, 10. Hands up, you think it's 10? 12? 15? It was 12. It was 12. 12 publishing houses rejected uh, her book. And it's gone on to sell over 500 million copies. Imagine if you were one of those who turned it down, who didn't see the value of what was in front of them. If only someone could have helped them see the value and see how valuable those books were. And I think that's true with Christianity. Lots of our, of our friends at school or our neighbours or our work colleagues Sadly, they don't think Jesus is anything special. They think the Bible's dull, it's irrelevant. And church, well, you don't want to go to church, it's boring, isn't it? Why would you want to go to church? Jesus just doesn't seem like he is worth bothering with. They don't see the value, just like those publishers didn't see the value of that Harry Potter book. But they're missing out on something so precious more precious than anything else. Because as Colin sang in the song, everything else, it just, it fades away. It doesn't last. So, for example, I've got a box of chocolates. Ah, oh, do you love chocolates? I love the chocolates so much, I ate them. They've all gone. Chocolates don't last, do they? 
toys break. Where is it? Look at my sword. Just They break. They don't last, do they? Things get old. Look at my computer. This is, I don't know, 20, 25 years old, something like that. I don't use it anymore. I don't even know if it still works. It's out of date. It doesn't last. These things just do not last. They get old. They get out of date. They break. They get thrown out. They get left in the attic, which is where I got that computer from. It's been gathering dust in my attic. They don't last. Who's this? I hope this is right. I hope this is right. I think, I think that's Billie Eilish, okay? A famous pop star worth $53 million. She's got the looks, she's got the fans, she's got everything that she wants. But one day, the looks will go. The career will end. The money, well, it never really truly satisfies. Robbie Williams would take that fame famous pop star going back a little bit, he said at the height of his career, when he had all the money in the world, he just felt empty. empty. He had everything, and he felt empty. Money, fame, it never truly satisfies. It fades away, as Colin sang. And you can't take it with you when you die. But if we are trusting in King Jesus, we have the most amazing treasure that we enjoy now and that lasts Forever. Now, I need, uh, I need a few volunteers to come and dig for treasure. Kids, don't let me down. Come on. Up you come. Come forward. Come forward. Don't be shy. Right. I've got one, two, three. Right, hang on. Whoa, whoa. One, two, three, four, five. So that's all oh, right. I've only got six in there. Okay, right. Come stand up on, the, uh, on, on here. That's it. Okay, two of you are going to have to dig for one thing. There are six in there, okay? So uh, why don't you guys dig together and find one? And then, right, if you guys come... No, that's all right, you stay there. Right, okay, dig away, try and find... Right, now hang on, just, just these guys. That's it, right, wait, 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 wait for it. You'll, you'll get your turn. Right, open that up, open that up. Okay, we're going to think about some of the benefits that we have from knowing Jesus now. What does that say? What does that say? We have a new power in us, the Holy Spirit. So we know God now. We're part of his kingdom. We have a new power in us, the Holy Spirit, helping us to live for Jesus. Okay, just plonk that one down. Right. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Dig in, Chris. Let's see if you can find one. Right, open it up. Tell me what it says. What, what does that say? In life. We have meaning in life, absolutely. We know where we've come from, we know where we're going to, we know what our purpose in life is as we follow King Jesus. Right, yes. come around here, come around, oh right, let's make some room for them so they can, they can, there we go, right, up you come, Abby, up you come, right, go on Abby, do you want to have a dig in? Right, see if you can find one. That's what I use for the guinea pigs, but it's clean, don't worry. Right, that's it. Open it up. That's, don't worry about the band. That's fine. Marvellous. Okay, right. What does is, what is it... Can you see what it says? Oh, it's a bit... There we go. We have peace with God. We have peace with God, don't we? We have peace with God. Fantastic. Right. Some, uh, who hasn't had a go yet? What's your name? Grace. Grace. Right, dig in, Grace. Hi. Rose, sorry, I'm such a muppet. Right, Rose, dig in. <laughs> See if you can find one. Oh, there it is! Right, hang on. Our sins Very good. are forgiven. Very good. Where... God's friends. Fantastic. We are. Our sins are forgiven, and we are God's friends. That's something else that we enjoy now. One, two, three, four. Right, come on up, big man. Right, what's your name? Evan. Evan. Right, Evan, get in there, big man. Oh, hang on. Is that... oh, hey! Right. Shall I help you with this? Yeah, you open it up. Yeah, you're right. You open it up. 
That's it. You open, I'll read. There we go. We have one another. When we're part of God's kingdom, we have one another. What a joy that is to have one another and that care and support and love of one another. Okay, right, last one. Come on up. Come remind me of your name? Anna. Anna, right. Okay, Anna. I, I, they, one, two, three, four. There should be one more in there. We may be here sometime. Oh, we're not. Fantastic. Right. Smells like guinea pigs. Yeah, it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. I didn't get it from the guinea pig uh, hutch. We can call God Father. We can call God Father. We can indeed call God Father. What a joy that is to know that God is our Father, that we are part of his family, and that he loves us, and he's watching over us, and he's protecting us. Give these guys a round of applause. Thank you very much. Fantastic. So we enjoy all those blessings now in Jesus, and we'll enjoy them forever. And as we think about the future, and as we think about forever, I think this is why particularly, why knowing Jesus is so valuable. You see, these parables are in the middle of some other parables where Jesus is talking about the future, how Jesus will come back and we will stand before him. And those who have trusted in Jesus will be with him in heaven forever, but those who haven't won't be there. So on that day, when we stand before Jesus, well, what value will computers and phones and PlayStations be? Or career? Or education? Or relationships? Or materialism? Or living for retirement? and holidays, whatever it might be, those different idols that we see and know in our hearts. What ultimate value will they be? They won't get us into God's forever new world. They'll fade away. The only thing of lasting value is whether we have trusted King Jesus. If we trusted, with, uh, trusted him, we will be with God forever in his perfect new world where there will be no more death, or mourning, or suffering, or pain. And that is why trusting Jesus is so important. Why knowing him and being part of his kingdom is worth more than anything, because what he gives us lasts forever. Not like the things of this world. And yes, now, being a Christian is costly. You see that in the parables. Uh, as, as the man with, the, uh, with trying to buy the field and the merchant, they sell everything to get the, uh, the, the treasure and the pearl. It's costly. Jesus is saying it's costly following him. People might think we're weird for being a Christian. They might be unkind to us. Because as we thought about, they don't see the value of the Lord Jesus. Maybe we will need to make sacrifices that are costly to live the way that he calls us to. But it is worth it. Because as we see in the parables, as that hidden treasure brought the man great joy, so Jesus brings us great joy. You think of those blessings that the children on earth there, that we know now, knowing God as Father, knowing we will be in heaven, safe with the Lord forever, knowing we're in God's hands, all these blessings, they bring us joy. So as we close... Maybe you've not really been looking for Jesus. You kind of stumbled over him, a bit like that guy stumbled over the treasure in the field. Or maybe like the, the, the merchant, you have been looking and searching. Well, don't miss what is more valuable than anything. Take action now. When the man found the treasure in the field and the merchant found the pearl, did they delay? No. No. They acted straight away because they realized how valuable it was. So don't delay. Don't put Jesus off. Or don't put off giving your all for him. You know, perhaps thinking, well, I'll indulge in that sin just a little bit longer. You know, then, then, then I'll give it up for Jesus. No, don't delay. It's worth so much more than anything. Make Jesus number one in your life. Give him your all. Tell others about him. Because the greatest treasure in the whole wide world, is peace with God 
through trusting Jesus and being part of God's kingdom. And when we stand before God one day, as we all will, what will be of more value? Let me pray. Father God, we thank you for King Jesus and for all the good things that we have in him, both now and indeed forever. Help us, help others to see that knowing him and having peace with him and and being part of his kingdom and and, and part of, of his family is worth more than anything. May we not put him off, but give him our all. In Jesus' name, amen.